Welcome back, everybody, to episode number five of the MC Events Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Capallo, joined by Gillen again. Uh, hello, I'm Gillen. I'm a Java developer uh, working with Minecraft plugins, uh, and I am part of Capallo Media. And Gillen may be part of Capallo Media, but I am the Capallo of Capallo Media. That's right, Joey Capallo, owner and organizer of MCC Hyatt's YouTube channel, and also help own and operate Block Wars. Today, talk about making Minecraft events, we're going to talk about the scope of your Minecraft event. And by scope, we just mean what is its purpose, who's playing in it, and how long are you expected to run it? Because there's lots of discussion an- about this recently with the idea of competitive events, content creator events, or even just friends events. And so those are the three labels we're going to use for the categories of events there are. There's obviously more than that, but we're just going to stick to this because it's easy to kind of explain. So that first one, the content creator events. If you want to think about that, it's your most of your Twitch rivals, it's your MCC, it's your craft masters. It's all the ones that are meant to be fun and streamed by a lot of the big popular content creators. And while they are competitive, they're also less competitive than just getting the best players of the game to play. For example, in Twitch rivals mind draft, rather than having only the, the best of the best play, They had different tiers of players that were playing and then they were drafted to each team. The point of doing a content creator event though is there's more individuality for it. There's more perspectives that you can watch. There's lots of different types of viewers that are going to watch the event because they're going to follow the creator. And those creators are all going to have different skill levels and skill sets, which means for a more entertaining and varied experience. This also allows you when making the event to like leave the production, the entertainment aspect to the content creators and not have to worry about doing all of it yourself while you're trying to organize everything. However, this does come with the caveat then that you can't really have any bugs in your event because then you have delayed functionally the stream that all these content creators are showing. And the more it's delayed, the more they have to improvise and talk about it and just find stuff to riff off of. Uh, But the other type of uh, event that we mentioned is competitive events. Uh, And in a competitive event, you're looking for players that are at a similar skill level, usually at like a much higher skill level. So you're looking at the fire breath mans and I guess dreams or whatever, those kind of people who are near the top of those content creator events, but they might not even be content creators. They might not have a good mic, but they're really good at Minecraft, which is a lot of the competitive uh, side of the game. Um, And these events kind of have higher stakes. There's more, there's more stress on being good at the game. It's not just like, I mean, it's fun because, as always, you want to have fun when playing games, but there's a lot of stress on who's going to win and the way they get there. Um, And the viewers are usually more centralized. People usually are not streaming themselves playing in in a competitive event because they don't want to, you know, waste their computer's resources. They don't want to be thinking about a stream while they're trying to play their best. So that's, you know, a lot of esports where you're just kind of watching the actual people running the event stream it and you have commentators who are talking about what's going on so that the players can just focus on playing the event. Um, so if you are planning on running this type of event, you have to focus on production. You need to focus on making sure that you are providing experience for all the different types of people who want to watch this and providing them like with what's the scoring, what's going on. Uh, having an understanding who's playing and all those things because naturally when you're watching you don't know what everyone is who everyone is because they're not you know big content creators you're not coming there for that person you're coming there for the game itself yeah and so if you want an example of thinking of a competitive event it's easier to go outside of minecraft to go to like smash bros or valorant or overwatch or league any of those where one central broadcast team is showing you the competition between the best teams So if you're doing this for a Minecraft event, it'd likely be a very PvP game or parkour game because it needs to be something where it's very high skill expression and skill floor and ceiling for players to be able to demonstrate their competitive advantages and skills. But just like uh, content creator events, uh, bugs look bad. They ruin the experience, but it's very different in a competitive event because it's not just, oh, the content creator's like, well, kind of ruined my stream. It's bad that we had that. It actually can have a large effect. A lot of esports have prize pools. And if you lose a bunch in esport, you could get removed from the team. You're not like a famous person creating videos. You are a person who needs to win and do well and stay on top to make money. So 
you're as the person creating it, you you have this responsibility to make sure that your event is of has quality. There is no big bugs messing up everything because you you don't want to ruin the experience for both the viewers, but especially the players who are relying on how well they play. Yes. And there's also the case that if these bugs are causing competitive advantages and the players realize it, they're going to utilize them to the fullest extent because they're yeah. if it works, it works and they're going to use it to win because that is the goal of this event. Whereas content career event, the goal is to win, but it's not to win at all costs. It's instead to win as kind of intended, whereas a competitive event, you're kind of incentivized to win through any means you can find, obviously outside of cheating. No kind of cheating should ever be allowed in your event because that comes with all sorts of issues. Yeah, but both competitive and content creator events, even though we're you know putting them in two separate categories, they do share a lot of things. If you're deciding which one to create, there is some basic stuff you need. The first is just you need a high quality server, um, which of course is always going to cost money. That's that's just the downside of getting a good server, um, because you know in the case of a content creator, that's part of you know not ruining the experience if things are lagging and it's taking forever to switch between games that ruins the viewing experience and the content creators experience um but as we talked about competitive advantage and making sure that you know when the players are fighting for you know money they need to actually have a server that is doesn't give certain people in certain regions Mm -hmm. different advantages and just having that be consistent then throughout the event throughout multiple events having the same level of high qualityness to it is just necessary to have people have trust in your event and want to play in it multiple times Mm -hmm. and one of the things that probably is overlooked by most people that aren't aware of it is doing the scheduling for events of how difficult that can be of trying to get 20 people 40 people 60 people however many players you need but then also the staff behind the scenes the substitutes as needed, making sure it's a good hour for all the viewers as well. That's very difficult. And that's a case of that, yes, for both competitive and content creator events, you're going to have to work hard to make sure the logistics of scheduling match up and that you're not, you know, scheduling your event on the same day as MCC, which would be unfortunate, or scheduling your event on the same day as the Super Bowl, which are like most people that play Minecraft don't care about the Super Bowl, but you'll then have several people who aren't, who are interested, so then we can't be at the event. Yeah, But then there is the third kind of event, which is the most different from these other two. And we just kind of call it the friends event. It's the idea of having an event just for your friends to play in or just a group of people you've met online. They are friends and they bring their friends kind of thing. But with the goal of just having a good time playing some games, goes, having that gaming session we all like to have in Minecraft without it just being on a server or without it just being like a, a survival server or Hypixel and instead having it be more custom and kind of with you know some more fun things to be done the advantages for this obviously is that bugs aren't as big of a deal uh, when your friends know that the expectations are a bit lower of what you're doing because you're just making it for them making it out of passion out of for fun and that your events don't need to be publicized they don't need officially scheduled it's just as people are able and then it's okay to just use command blocks a cheap server okay to just use whatever works because the point is you're just putting on a fun experience for this group of friends for these people and then you don't even have to worry about if it's streamed or videos created. So from your side as an event organizer, you're just worried about are these players going to have a good time? Yeah, and I think it should be stressed that if if your intention is just to make a f- event like this and you're like, I don't want to put a lot of money. I don't want to have to get a huge team of people to manage these things. I don't want to do all this communication stuff. It's it's OK to have a friend of friends event. And honestly, most Minecraft events are friends events because that's just how it works. Like that's the easiest one to create. And it, it would be hard to count them because as we said, a lot of them aren't publicized and we don't really know about them. But even when, you know, you and a group of people decide to come together and play some survival in a way that is like an event. And if you start mm-hmm. adding mods or creating your own little games, like you're running your own little event. It doesn't have to be It doesn't have to have an official name and be posted with a certain time and all these things. It's just you can create stuff for other people just for fun. You don't have to think about what the larger effect of it is. It doesn't need to be a mini game format where there's eight games and you announce all the teams on Twitter. That is just a certain style. An event can be just playing, uh, setting up a last life server with your friends or a third life, whichever version of it we call it now, and playing Mm -hmm. that for a set number of hours. Like that's an event. 
that's a fun event to do. So just recognizing that any of those events you do with your friends any way you want to make sure they have a good time. We respect that. We understand that we've done it. We've played with our friends and done those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the best experiences I've had in Minecraft. So the point with this conversation, though, is that when you're going to work in your event, it's important to decide on this early on because it's really hard to switch. And we'll talk about why it's hard to switch and how you could do that if you wanted. But it's oft, it's much better to decide early on for a variety of reasons. And the main one being that it can have a large effect on the game design. Yeah, I mean, when especially if you're deciding between competitive and content creator, I mean, friends, of course, it's like more of the quality stuff. But between competitive and content creator, it's very important to realize like, OK, I'm making a game that is either going to be for a bunch of people who are really good at the game or a wide range of skill levels. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you look at it, something like MCC, you have like Parkour Warrior, early Parkour Warrior, not Parkour Warrior currently. Um, it kind of suffered from this issue where players who are good at parkour would actually have a fun time. They'd be able to get through it, but it was a fun challenge. But a lot of the players who weren't would just kind of be stuck and they'd never be able to move and they would just kind of hate the game because they would spend like five, ten minutes in one area just failing the yeah. same jump over and over again. And sometimes they would just give up and kind of sit there and just do something else. And like that's an example of game design that, as we've seen recently, they kind of fixed and created a new way around it. Um, but that's the kind of thing you have to think about where it's like oh well if you just know you're gonna have a bunch of players who are good at parkour old parkour warrior would work perfectly because like they would all be competing to get to the end you could actually think of the end goal as everyone's gonna make it there who's gonna get there first Mm -hmm. instead of who's just gonna end up making it to the end (laughs) yeah it's a case of between content creator and competitive you're kind of planning for whether there's a big skill gap or a small skill gap and if you're Mm -hmm. playing for a big skill gap the need to make sure the game is fun for people who aren't as technically skilled at Minecraft in either PvP or movement, while still also having the game give benefits to the players who are more skilled. Because you don't want it to be entirely random, because that doesn't make for a fun experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're making an event just for players that are competitive and it's very small skill Gilead between them, you can make it where it's only up to their abilities. And it's a high skill expression there. You get to put on the put on the moves, put show off their skills. And it's up to that to them decide if they're going to win or not. Mm -hmm. Um, But while that's the first main thing, it's just game design, thinking about where you're going with it. There's also the idea of having realistic timelines because, oh boy, are events delayed repeatedly or pushed back, postponed, or just put in development for longer than you might think makes sense. But from our side and the event manager side, it makes so much sense. Yeah, I think you never realize how much work something is going to take until you start doing it. That's just kind of a universal thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, But especially for, you know, any just games in general, video games, of course, get delayed all the time. Everyone will know all the video games that took much longer than it seemed like they would. Um, And Minecraft events are the same way. And when you're, you know, running a planning on doing a content creator or competitive event, when we say, oh, make sure you don't have all these bugs, on paper, it's like, OK, yeah, sure, I'll do that. But you realize that that's months and that could be months of testing and months of fixing all these things that if you just had a friend's event, you could just instead spend that time playing the event and just kind of making your way through and being like, OK, well, that's fine. We'll make do with that. Um, but when you have a competitive event or even a content creator event, those bugs need to be fixed. You can't allow them to yeah. keep existing. The differences in quality, quality you need for competitive and content creator versus friends that mean that you need extra time in your timeline to make sure you're getting all every bug squash that you're having the event be as polished as possible versus the friend event where it's okay if it's a little more scuffed having said that as well in a competitive event you might want to have balance patches in the same way mcc island uh keeps having balance patches to kind of change up some of the game modes slightly or make it more fair and you need to make sure there's time for that in your competitive setting but you're probably not changing the games as much as you would in a content creator event with like MCC, like Block Wars, where you're trying to make the game f- uh, fresh and entertaining again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a competitive event, it's likely that you just do slight changes, slight balancing things, but you keep the core games the same. If you think of something like League of Legends, Valorant, Overwatch again, those examples where the game stays the same, they're playing the same game. It's just that certain characters or certain items or certain things are getting changed and tweaked every so often and then with we talked about a little bit for scheduling content creators it's a mess 
would not recommend. It's like herding cats. But even just scheduling and planning any event, it can be a mess. And especially if you're scheduling a monthly event of trying to make sure there's always a time, whether it's a Saturday, Sunday, whatever day, trying to make sure it works is difficult. But then when it comes time, if you want a competitive event, you not only have to schedule like the single events, but you'll have to schedule if there's brackets or playoffs or championships and have to make sure those work for everybody involved, which since it's not a professional esport where everybody's paid, is much harder to manage all of those expectations. One thing I did want to mention about competitive events mm -hmm. is that, you know, when we were listing these three types, we were able to give a, a lot of examples for content creator. Um, we can give examples for small friends events that we've seen, you know, small posts on Twitter and stuff for. Um, competitive events don't really e exist that often mm -hmm. in the Minecraft sphere. Um, and if you're someone who's kind of thinking about, like, I want to create a competitive event, um, I let this be a cautionary tale of what you're getting into. <laughs> yes. Um, I know that a lot of people may have seen, I don't know how long ago it was, I think FitMC mm -hmm. had a video where he was explaining, like, it, it was titled, it, like any FitMC video, it was like the day Minecraft Esports died or something. Yes. Um, but it was kind of talking about the fact that, you know, make getting Minecraft to be an esport and being competitive is very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and as a developer, even in making a content creator event, constantly struggling with the stuff, even when it's not the most important part, it's just Minecraft has a lot of things that make it not great for competitive play. Um, for some basic ones will be if you're a person who's played Valorant before, um, you will know that when you're on a server, which when you're playing with other people, you're on a server, you're sending data to a server that says, hey, I shot a bullet in this direction. The server takes that and sends that to all the other players and tells them, hey, someone shot a bullet in that direction. I believe in Valorant, it does that about 120 times a second. That back and forth happens tons. It's a lot. Um, or it at least attempts to do it. It might fill in the gaps with some other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's at least it's 60 or 120. It might be 120. It might be 60. I forgot exactly which one it is. It's very fast. Minecraft, on the other hand, does it 20 times a second, um, which is much, much smaller. Um, as a human, that might seem like still a lot, like 20 times a second is still very fast. But as from a game point of view, especially in a competitive game where the difference between you hitting someone and them hitting you is just one click away, um, it can have a very large effect with all, you know, the lag and slower uh slower experience that minecraft has um and there are numerous other examples of why minecraft just as a competitive game kind of lacks the ability because unlike a game like valorant or league or uh, league of legends or rocket league um it wasn't created with the intention of being an esport like mm -hmm. these games were so when creating the game and continuously when mojang updates the game they aren't thinking about you know player versus player combat or player movement as the main idea of making sure things are balanced and fair they're just thinking about it as you know a survival and sandbox yeah. game and there's also a lot to be said for game modes of trying to make a competitive minecraft game mode being very difficult if you think about league of legends what makes it fun is all there's there's different characters all different abilities in minecraft there's only so many vanilla abilities people could have with their weapons or items and stuff and so any new abilities, new things you want to put in, you have to code and develop them. But the more you add new things to Minecraft, the less it feels like Minecraft. And so then you operate in this weird gray area where you want to make it competitive, but it doesn't feel like the game everyone's used to playing. Mm -hmm. This is a big case of why everyone's still in 1.8 uh, PvP, because when the combat was changed, the newer version, they said, this feels different. I don't like how this it doesn't feel like the old version to me. I'm not going to change. Yeah, because again, when we talk about competitive stuff, for people to be at that top skill level, you have to have experience. You have to play for a really long time. Um, if you look at most esports at the beginning of their esport, uh, unless it's like an uh, an FPS like first person shooter game where you can use other games you've played before as experience, a lot of times in the beginning, the competitive like scene doesn't look that good. Like actually, if I, I remember watching old Rocket League esports stuff from like the first season and just like it doesn't look like pro rocket league mm. like it looks closer to like middle range players um nowadays um but in those you know what is it now like 
five, six years since Rocket League came out, people have been continuously playing the game. The game has not changed a lot. And because of that, they've gotten really good at it. Um, the same way that real world sports people play from a young age and get really good at that game. Yes. And that the average player keeps getting better overall as more, mm -hmm. more time passes and more people have played the game. Um, but it's a case competitive events are tricky for a variety of reasons and trying to put one on while we wholeheartedly support you if you're doing it. Make sure to do the background research into why Minecraft is difficult for that and how you kind of navigate overcoming those. If there's enough interest for comments on this podcast, we'll talk about that more in depth if you want more info and then we get some more links available if that's something you're interested in. So let us know. Um, but the other big reason to decide on what kind of event you want early on is because when you're trying to switch later, it's going to make your audience, your community, the players probably angry because it's yeah. not what they expected when they got into it. Um, right now, there's only one current example of an event doing this, which is Block Wars, which obviously I'm very familiar with as I own it and partially run it. But it's just really hard to switch for a lot of reasons because of the fact that if you start with an event such as Black Wars, we'll use it as our example of what could have gone wrong, but also what went right. Black Wars started as a friends event way back in Block Wars 1, even though now we call it Black Wars Origins 1, almost two and a half years ago, a long time ago. And it was just four teams, a group of friends that were MCC testers. And if you think about how far it's come since then, it's ridiculous in terms of growth, development, how much time's been put in, how many changes have been made, that it's almost unrecognizable from the first one. But so what's hard about changing, you might ask then, is because if you want to turn your friend event into a content creator event, well, if your friends aren't content creators, then they can't play. Yeah, um, there's kind of an issue where like if you're imagining, oh, I want, you know, Tommy in it to play in my event. I was like, now that's a little less topical, but I want Tommy in it to play in my event. Tommy in it when he's streaming will have at least in the tens of thousands of people watching. Probably your friend you're playing with might not even break double digits um i don't know maybe they do get a good maybe because tommy ends in that they get like in maybe in the hundreds um and it's kind of an issue like with a lot of content creator events figuring out like what what level do you have to reach to be in it and like being like is it okay to have less viewers but it just kind of feels weird when you have you know a content creator that is totally in this you know persona and has all this high quality equipment and is trying to show it put a put on a show to a bunch of viewers and on their team as a person with a low quality mic and not a lot of experience being on camera trying yes. to blend in um, and that can cause a lot of issues and even the issues of if those friends or players who aren't you know are aren't there are just fans of the creator playing against them then you run into issues of targeting or trying to cross team and help that content creator and you get all these issues of like how do these players all interact to like play the event as it's supposed to be played rather than like them catering toward the content creators that are then in it. So say you're moving from your friend event to the content creator event and you go, all right, my friends can no longer play. Well, your friends probably aren't going to be the happiest. Um, mm -hmm. That's the main reason why Block Wars still has Block Wars Origins is because we want to keep that same community together. We want to keep them all together playing the event and keep the uh, soul and spirit of Block Wars still alive. But if you imagine the example, imagine a alternate timeline where we didn't have that, well, then you wouldn't have that same community still. You wouldn't have those people very excited about Block Wars. They would have left feeling kind of bitter um, leaving the event because it felt like they got passed over for people that are more, quote unquote, more successful because they're content creators. Um, and so that's one way it's hard. I mean, the other way it's difficult to turn your friend event into a content creator event or even a competitive event is you have to have connections to these people to then get them into your event. There's been too many Minecraft events to count that have started and not finished or ended poorly or crashed or had so many other issues that happened in recent years that content creators are a little more frugal in deciding where they want yeah, to hesitant, go. Yeah, hesitant, yeah. Well, hesitant, yes. Um, because so many go poorly that they kind of wait for, you know, some like Ant Frost likes to join in uh, whatever one he can because he's interested. He's played in both Block Wars and Pandora's Box when they were smaller. 
CPK as well joined Block Wars when it was smaller because he knew some people in it. But you you won't have the big names join these things when they're really small because it's not expected for it to go well. And so even if you want to you know start getting connections and getting the content creators in it, you have to like uh, incrementally get players one at a time until you have more connections, get more people in. But then how do you decide when somebody's too small to be in? It's not an answer I can give to you because I don't think there is a good answer for it. It depends again on what the purpose of your event is for. Yeah. And then obviously changing the biggest, the biggest reason why it's so hard to change from friend event to concert group event or competitive event is the quality has to be up to the extreme. No longer can there be bugs. Can there be scuff? No longer can games sometimes feel boring or uninteresting. Now everything needs to be fun. Everything needs to be exciting. Everything needs to work first try every time. Well, asterisks on that yeah well you can try you're trying to attempt to make sure that everything works first try every yes. time it's very important that you know we talked about the, the differences between the three and when you're when you've created an event with the intention of meeting those kind of lower standards just to have fun now you're having to make up for all the again that short timeline you made for a small friend event now turns into this long timeline where now you have to make up for all the stuff you didn't do when creating the friend event. Especially if something, if you coded the event the first time and you kind of left in some stuff like I'll fix this when I have time that those issues pile up very quickly. And now when you're trying to up the quality, you have to go back and fix all those things that you said you're going to get to later. And all of a sudden, you know, adding a new game rather than being like, a two a two month process or one month process becomes a six month process because you have to rewrite the entire code base, which is what Blockwares had to do between series one and two. The whole event was functionally was rewritten and changed and redone to be able to work in the way it does now. And then the other reason why switching events formats is hard is because there's going from friends or competitive to content creator or content creator competitive. There just means there's going to be more attention directed toward your event. And that means there's more pressure. The more people watching, the more people playing, that means the more people watching, the more people invested, the more people all expecting you to hold up the end of the bargain of you saying, this Minecraft event is fun. This Minecraft event will work. Yeah, when I mean, we've and seen yes, the, even, you know, the events that we kind of put on a pedestal like MCC, who does a, they do a very good job of creating an event that is fun and works well. Even they have mistakes. They get a lot of anger from the community from time to time. Um, and it's kind of important to be ready for that because no matter how well you do, there you're going to fall into these situations. And you have to be ready that whether that's, you know, writing down like, OK, what's a plan for what happens when things go wrong? Um, kind of mentally preparing yourself like, OK, you know, if I'm the person running this event, people might be, you know, trying to attack me on Twitter or something after something goes wrong. They may take personal attacks and I have to be willing to push through that and ignore those things and, you know, respond in a way that doesn't paint me as a worse person, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, attacking them back. You have to think about, you know, the idea, because when you look at some of these events like MCC, you know, Noxite is not, you know, a content creator, but because he's running the event, he effectively is a public figure in the Minecraft space. Um, so you, you start kind of having to deal with all the pressure that comes from that too. And so while I would love if Twitter communities and you know, the online communities were more supportive of the people making events, because it is very difficult. And we acknowledge that as people who do it, we support, want to support all of you out there who are doing it. So if you're going to talk about that, you reach out to me on Twitter or on Discord. And I'm, I'm willing to give advice and some, some help in that. But it's recognizing that nonetheless, there's going to be people that get angry or upset with something that happens in your event. Even if your event ran perfectly, sometimes people are just upset because their content creator didn't win, even if everything ran as it was supposed to. And there's really nothing you can do to solve that person's anger. It's just being willing, being able to not let that affect you when you're deciding how to run the event. Yeah, and I mean, with a competitive event, if you have two teams going up against each other, about half of the viewer, well, I mean, it depends on how big the viewer, the viewership of each team is, but about half the viewers are going to be angry, no matter what the outcome of the match is, because they lost. Um, and 
you, you see it all the time in real world sports where people complain at the refs, like <laughs> yep. in a game, like you're that's that's what's going to happen to you, especially in a competitive event, because, you know, people get very attached to teams just as people get attached to content creators and the teams are especially in a competitive event, the teams are going to get attached to whatever prize money or moving forward in a bracket or whatever they achieve from winning or losing. Yep. And so you're just opening yourself up to uh, more criticism more anger all those things when you decide to make this event be for a larger community and so i urge anyone who's thinking about doing that to make sure you're comfortable with that idea and just have the support around you to help you through that as it arises um that's probably a great stopping point for this episode gellen uh what are we going to talk about next week so i think next week we will talk about theming an event and how Build how you're, you know, what you're building, what kind of games you have, how you name things, and how all of that kind of makes your event feel special. For sure. That'll be another. I'm excited for that topic for reasons we'll get into next week, but we'll see you all next time.